Dr. Naik Sahib, I hope you are doing well, inshallah. This is Moinuddin Ibn Nasrullah from Ahmedabad, Gujarat, the state which has given Prime Minister of India. I am a law student. Zaira Wasim was a young Kashmiri actor in Bollywood, launched through a blockbuster, but soon she left the industry writing a long post on Islam. Yesterday, when she posted the ayah about locusts as a punishment of Allah, the right winger strolled her badly, after which she deactivated and deleted her Instagram and Twitter handles. But she has recently again, a couple of hours back, come back on the Twitter. As a sister in faith, she should be supported as kuffar are targeting her because she left haram and started practicing Islam. And she should be supported now. And the Twitter post is given where it mentioned Zaira Wasim on a Twitter. So we went upon them the flood and the locusts and lies and frogs and blood. Signs openly self-explained. But they were steeped in arrogance of people given to sin. A similar question is posed by Muhammad Arsal, Arsalan, Calcutta, India. Recently, we witnessed a cyclone and there was a massive flood and destruction. There And also there was a locust attack in east side of India. I want to ask whether we can compare these calamities with Ayah 133 from Surah Al-Araf regarding the Pharaoh and his people. And the verse of Surah Araf chapter 7 verse 33 says, So we sent on them the flood, the locust, the lice, the frogs, and the blood as a succession of manifest signs. Yet they remained arrogant, and they were of those people who were, who were Mujrimun. Regarding the first part of the question, uh, their sister by the name of Zaira Wasim, who according to the questioner, uh, she became very famous on the Bollywood and, and, and she was a Bollywood actress. And last year, she left acting because she realized that acting is not according to the Islamic principles. And for that, Alhamdulillah, I personally really congratulate her and I support her for taking the decision for leaving the Bollywood. Because according to me, most of the part of the Bollywood is not appropriate for a practicing Muslim. And it really takes a lot of courage and sacrifice for a person who is famous in the Bollywood to quit Bollywood. So I really and I really appreciate her. I thank her and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he guide her and give her more hidayah inshallah and may he reward her multiple times and as i mentioned that a beloved prophet Muhammad said that anyone who leaves a sin and comes to the straight path allah rewards him and the bigger the sin that a person leaves the bigger is the reward and for a person who was famous in the bollywood and i've received many awards it is really difficult and requires courage and guts which he has done so inshallah allah will reward her multiple times more than the sin that she was doing. And I am not too much aware of, of, of the actors and actresses. And even my family doesn't watch uh, the movie, Bollywood movies. But last year I remember that my daughters, they told me about, uh, about the sister Zaira Wasim and how she quit, uh, quit Bollywood. And she mentioned a very long lengthy post on the Twitter and they forwarded it to me and, and my daughters and my family, they are not, they are not aware of, 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 of the Bollywood actors and actresses. But this particular uh, 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 Muslima, they forwarded the message to me and I read it and Alhamdulillah, I really pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may, may he reward her. And according to the question, she had posted an ayah of Surah Araf, chapter 7, verse 133, on her Twitter account, and she did not mention anything. And this is common that the media, which is which is right-wing media, or mainly supports this present unjust government, the BJP and the RSS, what they do, they take a quote 
and they add own information and they try and malign. And what they did is that in the media report, they took this verse of the Quran she had quoted and they insinuated that she is talking about India. If you read her Twitter account, the word India is not mentioned. It's only quoting a verse of the Quran. And they went on to allege that she is saying that Allah has brought the punishment into India by sending the locust. Now this is the interpretation and this is common. If you read the news, you come to know that this locust is there, is prevalent. It has recently started mainly in the African countries, in the east part of Africa. It's also prevalent in parts of Pakistan, also in parts of India. So when she did not mention any country, she did not mention any place, these people go out of the way to put their own information and malign her. And this is exactly what did it to me. When about three and a half years back, on the 3rd of July 2016, when a, terrorist, when a terrorist attack took place in Dhaka and about six or seven terrorists, they killed about 22 foreigners in Dhaka. And one person, Rohan, he had to be, he happened to be a fan of mine on the Facebook. But they gave the report saying that he was inspired by Dr. Zakir Naik to do the terrorist attack. He was just a fan of mine. And Alhamdulillah, today I have got 22, 5 million followers on my Facebook. Am I responsible for the activity? But the way they gave the report as though he was inspired to do the terrorist attack because of me. For that, they have to show a post of mine which says that you should kill innocent human beings, which they cannot. So what they do, they take a post, they add their own misinformation to it and malign the person. And this is exactly what they did to Zaira Wasim. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he reward her. This post is very much relevant and may he encourage her and I'm telling that she should continue to study the Quran. She should continue mentioning verses of the Quran on the Twitter and the social media and she should not be bothered about these people who are a problem to the society. These people are there to create a fitna and our beloved, if you read the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Furqan, chapter 24, verse number 30, that for every prophet, he has kept an enemy. And after the prophet, it is the da'is who continue spreading the message of Islam. And for, for a da'i who is successful, there are bound to be enemies. So we should not be discouraged or disheartened when the enemies attack, the, when the enemies attack us. And you be rest assured that if you speak the truth, the enemies of Islam have to attack you, have to attack you. And if you are successful, the more successful you are, the more larger number of enemies will you have and the more bigger enemies will you have. And the most successful human being and the most influential human being on the face of the earth was our beloved Prophet Muhammad And unfortunately, he also has the maximum number of enemies in the world. The maximum number of people who attack him is the maximum number a person is attacked in the world today is Prophet Muhammad So we should not be disheartened. In fact, we should be reassured that we are on the straight path. And if you realize regarding the verse of the Quran of Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 133, it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word used here is Tufan in Arabic. It's translated as flood in some of the translation. Tufan actually means, it means a total death. It can be due to a flood. It can be due to an earthquake. It can be to an, it can be due to an epidemic. It can be due to a pandemic. So basically Tufan means total death. A large number of death caused by any calamity, whether it be flood, whether it be earthquake, whether it be epidemic, maybe pandemic. So here it can mean flood. It can even, even be the COVID-19. It says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Tufan, maybe a flood, maybe an epidemic, a pandemic, or maybe COVID-19 coronavirus, or, and he sent locusts, and lice, and frogs, and blood, and there's a list of wrath which Allah sent on the people of Pharaoh. And the next verse you read, it says, it was a warning to, to Pharaoh and his people. And they prayed to Moses, peace be upon him, that let this calamity Ask your God, your Lord, to remove this calamity. 
and when this calamity was removed, they did not come to the straight path. When they promised that they will release the children of Israel, the Jews, they did not do that. And Allah sent another calamity. And again they promised that please remove it. And this is the statement, give. these are the verses in the Quran, talking about Pharaoh and how Allah brought his wrath upon the people of Pharaoh. So this verse of course is relevant today. There are calamities taking place today. And any calamity that befalls on a particular area, it can be limited to one area, it can be to many areas. In that area, there may be good people and bad people. So any calamity that comes, if it comes on a people who have sinned, then this is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it comes on the people who are on the straight path, it's a test on them. So it is wrong to think that in a calamity, 100% of the people are sinners. And we know that when the plague came during the time of the Sahabas, at, at, at that time, 25,000 Sahabas died in the plague. And a beloved Prophet said, when the plague comes, it's mentioned in the Sahih Hadith, when the plague comes, it comes as a punishment to the unbelievers. But for the believers, it's a blessing. What you have to realize here, that if the people on whom the calamity comes, if they are on the straight path, it's a test. Allah is testing them. That yet do they have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet do they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. And wants to increase their reward. On those people who are sinners, it is a punishment. So, but naturally this ayah is very apt today. Especially when coronavirus is prevalent in almost all parts of the world. More than 90% of the countries in the world, more than 185 countries in the world are, are infected with coronavirus. That is COVID-19. It's become a pandemic. So this was is very relevant nowadays. And after coronavirus, we realized that even the locusts came, mainly in the countries of Africa, even in parts of Pakistan, in parts of India. So what is wrong in this verse? These people who are adding their own information and maligning the Muslims, this is their job to create fitna. We should not be disheartened. We should continue more strongly. And what I believe, there should be an organization, a Muslim organization, which should be well versed with the social media. And anytime when the enemies of Islam, they start spreading misconception about Islam or trolling a Muslim because of their popularity, the reason they are against Zaira Wasim is only because she left Bollywood. She, she went from darkness to light. She left an industry which is not appropriate for practicing Muslim. So just because of that, they're trolling her and they're going against her. There should be an organization, a Muslim organization, which should be specialized in social media and see to it that they counter these misconceptions of Islam. They counter such people who are trolling the Muslims on the straight path. So I hope this, in short, gives about the verse of the glorious Quran. And furthermore, if you read, in Surah Kamar, chapter number 54, verse number 7, it speaks about the day of resurrection. On the day of Qiyamah, you will find human beings coming out like locusts. The same word locust is used here. Why? Today science tells us that locusts, it emerges from the ground and they gather together and they can, in one square kilometer, the number can be 40 to 80 million. They gather very fast and they can move in swarms covering 120 square kilometer. Imagine 120 square kilometer, each square kilometer, they are approximately 40 to 80 million. So in 1200 square kilometer, if they can move together, that's equal to 48 billion to 100 billion locusts. So this is giving an example that on the day of resurrection, all the human beings will come from the earth together. All right from Adam, peace be upon him, till the last day of judgment, till the last day. All will gather together in billions, in tens of billions. So this is the example that Allah gives of locusts. Giving an example, this would be at the time of the day of judgment. How will we again emerge, emerge from the dead? So this is reminding of the Akhirah, the signs of Akhirah. So all these signs that Allah gives us makes a believer come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has more faith in the Quran 
and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he give Zahir our theme more courage and more hidayah to study the Quran, to study Islam and may she be able to take her former colleagues out of this industry to the straight path of Islam.